Joe, it's Brian Kenny. Great to have you back on the show. Great to have you back from London, brother. Uh, good. Uh, Joe, Mets Padres, give me something on either yeah. club. Well, I mean, you talk about the Padres, and they've been kind of uh, an enigma for the last year or so. I was looking it up. I didn't even realize they only had 89 wins last year, and we've been expecting a lot more out of them uh, based on the, 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 the makeup of the team, the amount of money invested, et cetera. Their offense has been really not very good this year. Obviously, their pitching is uh, kind of middle of the pack. The thing with them that I'm seeing, I heard you guys talking about grit. For me, September and October provides its own energy. They need to develop that energy on a daily basis. Uh, they did that nice job against the Mets last year in the playoffs. There's a different vibe at that point where, like I said, those months, that time of the year provides its own energy. You have to be able to uh, generate that on your own uh, during the regular season when things aren't so exciting exciting mm -hmm. at that particular juncture. So for me, it's about that, and that's going to be internal. I know, I listen, Bo Mill's outstanding. I love Bobby. I don't know the, all the guys internally. I know you, Darvish, pretty well. But uh, that's something that's got to come from within, and they got to get it going now, and they, they got to – really uh, understand that every day counts and you just can't wait for the energy of the postseason. Yeah, Joe, I want to get deep with us here for, for a second mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. season is its own animal, isn't it? You see, right. pitch by pitch, it builds mm -hmm. on itself because I can't think of a reason why, you know, any of these four clubs are where they were. If we looked at, we say, hey, in February, here's a sneak peek at the standings. We'd say, what? So what is it about each season that actually there's a variety of outcomes that can happen that we're not anticipating? Yeah, sometimes it is. It's just guys getting off to a bad start. Sometimes it is injuries. There's all those different things that are involved. And sometimes it's a mindset like I'm talking about where, man, you, you really you develop that in spring training. You could almost feel your guys coming out of camp and you could feel your guys in a dugout on a daily basis. And you're alluding to that with the Padres. Something was just is just missing there right now. Um, but then again, it is it is early, and and these are the kind of things that can be nurtured, and there could be some a, a moment that can flip that switch for a group, and all of a sudden you become this this animal team. Uh -huh. But for right now, they're they're just missing something's just not um, checking all the boxes with them. And and again, it's coming out of camp, and and they need something uh, a seminal moment. For, it, it could be a fight. I mean, seriously, it could be a fight. <laughs> I mean, with the with the Rays, with the Rays, we fought the Yankees in spring training. We fought. The Red Sox during the season, all of a sudden, here we go. Um, there's something. It could be something igniting within the clubhouse. Somebody gets very vocal after a, a tough loss, or somebody that gets very vocal after a win, like you're talking, we're going to get to it in a minute, where two guys uh, did not run very hard, but they still won. To me, that's the perfect time to mm. get a little bit excitable. I, you, you did manage Wilson Contreras. What's your take on the Cardinals and Contreras saying he would no longer catch tonight? He's back catching Jack Flaherty. Yeah. Uh, why, uh, to me, why are you not catching? Why, why is this guy not good enough to catch? What's happening is the entire industry is basing being a good catcher, not on framing numbers. That's it. And I know Wilson's always uh, had a difficult time building a good number with that. But if you, if you uh, grade out the rest of his tools, blocking, throwing, hitting, hitting with power, he actually runs pretty well for a catcher, although he's not a great base runner. But this comes down to one particular item of catching. And that's where everybody's being evaluated these days is on how do I frame a pitch? How, do, how many strikes do we get? Because don't be deceived. He does a lot of really good things behind the plate, uh -huh. including his energy. I used to think we have to plug into this guy every night. So when we're talking about this, I would, I would like to believe that uh, and like to hear from them. It's about framing and we want him to frame better. And then you talk about game calling. I know for a fact how, how, how hard he studies. Maybe he hasn't got up to speed with their methods yet. Uh -huh. But you can actually do things during the course of the game to be an aid to him, too. Right. Oh, good points. Oh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by this next thing, though, Joe. The Blue okay. Jays sweeping the Braves over the weekend, right? So that's big. They sweep <laughs> the Braves. That's hard to do. Weird things, <laughs> though, happened that do might or possibly could mean something down the road. Going to look at these two plays. Bo Bichette didn't mm -hmm. run out a pop-up. He got thrown out at second. Later, Vlad Jr. thought he hit a home run. He didn't make it to second base. Two big players, and normally, Joe, they work very hard. I saw them over the weekend. They work hard, right? But I want to ask, when you see this, and here's Bo Bichette, right? That's, that's a no-man's land. you got to know you have a shot, and yet he gets thrown out at second base. So you have these two big players. They work hard. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to like. But, I mean, this is... Cadillacing. How do you handle this as a manager? Uh, first of all, I mean, I'm here to tell you with that one with Bo right there. I've seen a lot of guys do the same thing. I'm not defending him right now. And this one here also with Vladdy. Uh, these are situations like you described. I mean, I've had guys that might get caught in a trap like this once in a while, but they they notoriously play hard every moment of every game. So this requires a conversation. Brother, do you know how bad that looked? Do you know that how bad that makes our team look? Do you know that reflects on you personally? 
I mean, that's that's what I would get them on inside. And and eventually, we're trying to win the World Series. We're not just trying to get to the playoffs. And we cannot have these down moments because if you're doing it now, it can creep up on us. When we get to September and October, et cetera. So that would be my conversation. Yeah, I might find them a bottle of wine, a nice bottle of wine, maybe $200 bottle of wine from each of them, something like that. Uh, <laughs> but otherwise, otherwise, I would have a good explanation and let them know this is not acceptable behavior, guys. Everybody's watching us. Everybody's watching you. you got to set the right example. And I really believe the right conversation with these two young men would result in the fact that they, that they won't do that again. Well, if I have a lapse, by the way, I like I like scotch or bourbon, by the way, just throwing that out there. I want to ask That's you one thing, Joe, one, like, is it instructive that Javi Baez and Luis Robert, after getting benched, are locked in and thriving right now? That, oh, these are bad things that happen. Suddenly, yeah. th they're back and they're playing great. Is there something to be yeah. learned from that? Yeah, listen, it, it's, a, it's a tough conversation. When you pull somebody out of a game, it actually equals a really tough conversation. Uh, try not to suck. The, the essence of trying not to suck is to not embarrass yourself. That's what they did. They embarrassed themselves, and they don't want to embarrass themselves again. So absolutely, it can lock you in uh, as, a, as a professional, as a player. So it looks difficult at the time. I, you know, uh, there was different uh, discussion whether or not it should have happened or not, but I, I support the managers in these situations. And yes, it's a, it's a stern conversation because none of us want to suck, and that's what these guys did in that moment. Joe, always great having you on the show. Always uh, enjoy the conversation. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, BK. See you, buddy. Thanks.